Hey Internet! So this week I've been playing Fable 3, which if you don't know is Peter Molyneux's like role-playing game baby. You know, it's it's the game, he always has these really high hopes. He always like talks about them before they're made and how they're gonna be great. You know, they like really high hopes. It's like, oh, it's gonna be like way up here. And they're always kind of up here. But up here's really good too. You know, they don't quite reach here, but here's good. Well, here's Fable 3 coming around. Fable 1 and 2 have been here. Is Fable 3 going to hit here? Is it going to go lower? Hey, maybe even it'll go higher. Where's the space? Is it going to go way down? Who knows? I know. Here's my opinion of Fable 3. Fable has always been a really ambitious video game series. While it's always been really easy to just jump right in and play, they strive to do things that are original and different, things that'll move the gaming industry forward. Why, hello there, Eric. Oh, uh, hey, Peter Molyneux. Oh, I see you're enjoying my game. Y yeah, I mean, I guess. It, it's fun. What, what's with the chicken? Chickens are f***ing hilarious. Oh, no, it's, it's okay. Yeah, funny. <laughs> it's great. The game doesn't always reach these lofty goals that are set out for it, but it's generally always a fun series of games. Stepping into Fable 3 feels immediately familiar to anyone who played the previous games. The look of the world, its sense of humor, its weapons, its combat, all of it is things that we would expect in Fable. On the surface, it all seems like the same stuff, but underneath you find that they've actually done a lot of really interesting things. Still enjoying Fable 3? Uh, yeah, um, I don't know, it kind of feels the same. Well, it's not f***ing the same now, is it? If it's the same, it would call it Fable 2, but it's not, it's f***ing Fable 3. Oh, oh. Alright, I mean, if you say so, I mean, you made the game, I'm just playing it, man. One of the strangest things you'll come across when you enter Fable 3 is the fact that they get rid of, for the most part, menus. As much as menus feel like a part of RPGs, this game is without them. Instead, they go for a more real-world representation of things. When you hit the select button, you don't go to a menu, you go to this place called the Sanctuary. The Sanctuary is basically the real-world representation of all the menus you would expect. It's got your inventory menu, which is just a room where you can look at all your different costumes and weapons. You interact with the map in order to fast travel around or look at all the properties you own. And they even did away with the traditional leveling scheme and replaced it with the Road to Rule. Essentially, as you do quests, instead of gaining experience points which you use towards leveling, you use these sort of experience points on the road to rule, and you unlock certain gates to get further along this path to buy, you know, better spells and whatnot. Oh, brave knight, have you come to protect me? <laughs> you big softy. Oi, how's it going, buddy? Oh, what now? I see you met Eliza. You like her? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess. She, she's okay. I mean, she's cute and all, but... Don't you love her? But I, I don't know. I mean, my character just met her. I mean... No, we didn't f***ing just meet her. They've known each other all their lives, the f***ing childhood sweethearts. Well, I mean, I just... I mean, what, am I supposed to infer that... How about you infer that you're a f***ing wanker and don't know the first sh about video games? All right, all right. My character's in love with her. Fine. Like all the other Fable games, this game is fully voice acted and even has a lot of celebrities. Well, British celebrities, so you might not have heard of them unless you're a nerd like I am. One of the downsides though, at least in my mind, is that your character is also voice acted. The unnamed hero that you play actually does say things from time to time, but not a whole lot, so it kind of feels weird, like it was added last minute or something. One of the really interesting things about the game in general is that the whole story is that you're trying to raise an army to overthrow your brother. And I'm not really spoiling anything to say that you raise an army and overthrow your brother, but that's not the end of the game. That's the midpoint. Once you take over the kingdom of Albion, you become king, and it's not credits game over, thanks for playing, it's now you're king, run your country. And this is the point when the game's morality system really sort of kicks you in the teeth, because there are clear good and evil choices, but the repercussions for a good choice may have bad consequences. The second half of the game really bogs down this sort of idea of, sure, you can make the really good decisions and be loved by everyone, but that's going to have repercussions. The people might die because you wanted to be a really good guy. Who will be punished? These strangers or this girl? The sentence will be death. What? No, this can't be. You are the prince. 
Decide. Well, sent you in such love. Choose if she lives or dies. The love of your life, Eliza, or these strangers. Make your choice. Well, how am I supposed to make that decision? I, I literally just met the- She's the f***ing love of your life. Choose. Yeah, but I mean, I, I'm supposed to, you know, just choose right away. I'm in between a group of strangers and someone who's basically- st I've only known her for two minutes. Well, you haven't known her for two f***ing minutes. You're f***ing in love. Love of your f***ing life. How am I, am I supposed to just infer that? Am I supposed, you're supposed to, just to infer that, that? Because well, I told you, you can't I told just you that you are in love with me. So be in love with me. Yes, I can. This way. I can tell you what to I'm feel because to I told you. I told you that I'm you're in love with her. I'm supposed to develop relationships. That's the storytelling. That's one of the tenets of storytelling. You don't just. Well, you know what? Let's just agree to disagree. Make your well, choice. No, I'm not just make a decision off of the trailer. You can't just Overall, I have to say, the game is a lot of fun. It's not perfect, though. There are a lot of really important story things that I think they got wrong. I think the idea of making the character talk was a mistake. I think a lot of the relationships that are forced upon you are a mistake. And I don't really want to ruin the second half of the game, but there's some mechanics in that second half that are just really should not have been put in there. The whole time-based mechanic is just terrible. But at the end of the day, it's Fable. It's what you expect from Fable. Go into town, be a good guy, be a bad guy, be a neutral guy that just farts, have chicks fall in love with you, have seven million babies, buy a bunch of property and be a land baron. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff. So there you have it. Fable 3 is good. Sort of. It's kind of... I, I, I would use the analogy. It's, you know, Fable 1 to Fable 2 was like a big leap forward. Whereas Fable 2 to Fable 3 is a step to the side, you know, kind of that whole two steps forward, one step back thing. It doesn't quite, you know, change anything that around from Fable 2, you know, it, it feels very much like the same game, but it adds on to it. It's, you know, it, it's sort of different, but not like, it, it, it feels like what normal games do for sequels and not what Fable does for sequels, but it's not a bad game all around. It, it does some things that I don't like. I think some of the story things are kind of messed up, uh, but uh, you know, overall it, it turned out to be a pretty decent game and certainly worth a rental.